Single Store is a single database for all data intensive applications. It works with cloud, machine learning, also artificial intelligence. And with me is the CEO, Raj Varma. Welcome, Raj. Thank you very Great much, Jane. Great to be here. So give me an overview of Single Store. Yeah, uh, we are a good old boring database company uh, to, to begin with. Uh, we power data intensive applications um, and uh, we essentially are known for speed, scale and flexibility, right? So the world um, as we see it, Jane, uh, the world that uh, our kids would be inheriting would be a world where most of the products are going to be consumed as services. Um, so, you know, transportation, ride sharing, even DoorDash, et cetera, for food, uh, Uber Eats, all the rest. Everything is a service right now. And behind that service is data, and behind that data are databases on which you build those applications to provide uh, services uh, that we consume effectively. And uh, single store powers applications, which are what we call data intensive applications, which requires tons and tons of data to be processed in uh, very small amounts of time. And uh, we believe uh, we are uh, the database for modern applications, which is um, you know, handling modern data, which has uh, volume, velocity, and variety, and a lot of personality. And um, unlike the data that existed a decade ago, when mm. you know, the mobile phones and the social media weren't around. Um, so yeah, we are the single modern database uh, that powers uh, data intensive yeah. applications. Well, you say data is boring, but data is the new oil. I'm sure you've heard that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and it's really going to power our economy, right? The data about people and, and targeted mm. advertising and um, location and, and things like that. Yeah, uh, I mean, data is, uh, you know, whether you call it the oil or just the oxygen for the new economy, um, there is just so much of data. I remember uh, at a conference in my previous company, I stood there and made a bold statement saying that data doubles every 18 months. And everyone gasped and said, oh my God, data is doubling every 18 months. And now I read a stat that data is doubling every week now, you know? so. <laughs> The amount of data being uh -huh. thrown at us is just unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, just the good old databases like Oracle and you know, Mongo, et cetera, are just not gonna cut it, right? Mm. Because they were just built for a generation where the data was very different. And uh, we essentially are built for the modern data, right? So which is, as I said, doubling every week. So what did the data architects do? They had the swim lane or band-aids databases um, in their data architecture. So now we are seeing companies and banks having 20, 30, 40 databases, which mm. is adding to the complexity and hence uh, hindering their ability to perform a service for their clients. Interesting. So I noticed you're, you're in cloud. Is there a storage issue with all this data at some point in the future? Yeah, I, I think the storage issue is very well solved by the cloud providers. Okay. But Jane, <clears throat> the cloud providers are really interested in one thing, which is putting more and more data into the cloud. And I think they've done a great job in God's work there. But they also have databases, which are pipes for them to take your data into the cloud. So it's more like uh, a car company owning oil rigs. Why would they design an efficient engine for you? Okay. So the, the, the databases by the cloud providers are not as efficient. They're more, as I said, suction pipes of data into the cloud. Uh, we, um, we essentially have a three-tier storage structure, so you can put it in the cloud or, as we say, object store or a disk or in memory. So if you need throughput, we have it. If you need low latency querying, we have it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's why we are excited about yeah. our future, okay. and, um, and that's why our investors are putting their trust in us. <laughs> well, let's get to that, because that's sure. why you're here. You've just yes. had a, a very nice capital raise. Congratulations on that. Thank you so very much. Tell me about the amount. What do you plan to do with that money? Yeah, so um, you know, we've sort of raised $160 million in, call it, 10 months. And, um, you know, we've barely touched our Series E round that we um, closed in November of 2020. Uh, what we see is single store, um, we've got um, a, a cult following among developers. When they put their hands on single store, they just love it, all right? In fact, our rating in terms of uh, developer love, if there was an index like that, uh, we, you know, the, the, the data that we get, our love rating is 88%. Okay. You, know, you know, developers loving their database is not a very <laughs> normal thing to do. But 88% uh, love quotient. Um, and our next competitor, 
uh, which is, uh, you know, is probably sub 50. So oh. there is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. But we are also a very, the best kept secret, Jay. Mm -hmm. So we haven't really spent too much money in marketing. We have actually, you know, sort of invested more, put our money where our mouth is in terms of technology and mm -hmm. product. What we plan to do is um, a lot of our uh, sort of database companies around us have raised a lot of money and are creating a lot of awareness, mm -hmm. right? And we want to spend uh, at least some of that money in creating awareness and letting more developers use us. Mm -hmm. uh, we just announced a free version, a freemium version in the cloud of our product. So you can, if you're a developer, you can use a product for free forever. And um, so we just hope that uh, with that, uh, we are going to see more and more adoption of our product. And, uh, and hopefully our kids and the citizens at large will see the difference in the service that is provided to them as a consequence of that. Okay, so let's finish with this. So just talk to me about the overall industry, data, machine learning, artificial intelligence. We have kids about the same age. Yeah. Um, how will they live when they're adults? Yeah, I mean, you know, our our kids will be, you know, I remember 10 years ago making the statement that our kids aren't used to broadcast television, right? And everyone used to say, oh, yeah, actually, come to think of it, you know, we don't gather around the TV at 7.30 to watch Friends anymore, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So they watch Friends wherever they want in the car to our <laughs> annoyance. Uh, the, the fact really is that, um, you know, they are just used to, having everything available to them mm -hmm. through the channel of their choice when they want it. Mm -hmm. That's just the consumers we will be dealing with, all right? We thought uh, the millennial generation was hot. Wait for our kids to oh, grow goodness. up and how demanding <laughs> they are, and rightly so. And, and the pressure that that puts on enterprises and businesses is the can't wait, won't wait, uh, you know, aspect of business mm -hmm. is 24 7, seven days yeah. a week. And also, the competition is a click away, mm -hmm. <clears throat> right? Do you, can you ever imagine our kids walking into a bank? Mm. No. Yeah, I know. Right. I they, set they, them up with a, like a savings account. I'm like, maybe I shouldn't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. My, my, my daughter <laughs> just went to college. <laughs> and, um, and she's like, how do I open a bank account, you know? And of course, we opened a bank account. I don't think she'll ever see the insides of a bank. Yeah. Now, whether it's payment processing, whether it's entertainment, whether it's banking, whether it's consumption of transportation, food, entertainment, everything is going to be digital. Thank you, Raj. Great to meet you. Likewise. Thank you as well. We'll be right back. Cheers.